On this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are finishing off black chops and taking it for a mad skid. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We've made some great progress on our V8 powered Beamer. We took black chops to the dyno, we made over 300 kilowatts, and then adding a schnork, we just rotated our schnork up like that, and we picked up like another 20 or 30 kilowatts just by getting some nice, clean, fresh air. So, what's next, Martin? So, what's next? There's a few little things that we still need to fix up, and then we want to take it for a bit of a drive slash skid. Yes. I've brought black chops to my shed where there's a hoist because that makes exhaust work heaps easier. These are the flappers that we had on the exhaust. Um, awesome for making noise, but they do leak a little bit. It doesn't matter as much when it's near the back of your car, which is where you'd normally have like a dump pipe. Um, but up the front, it's just, the noise just sucks and um, kind of takes away from the experience of the car actually. So what I've done is I've got myself a gasket and I put it in a photocopier, which looks a little bit like this. Yeah, it's actually a scanner, but the beauty is if you scan a flat object and a ruler, it's possible to create a part in CAD software that is the correct dimensions. Alternatively, you can use your face, but make sure you close your eyes. If you leave them open, the scanner might suck your soul into it. What the f*** are you doing? Okay, it wasn't actually a photocopier. My friend Miles made it on his uh, plasma cutter, but we did do it over the internet, which I think is pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the gasket in, like so, and then put the big blanking plate over the top, and bang, just like that. It's blocked off. You can always put them back on if you want. We may change this exhaust later on when we go and put the car through all the engineering because it does qualify except for the exhaust. Uh, so for now, I'm going to block that just so it doesn't sound so crap so I can take it to the track and do some skids and some burnouts. That's the exhaust hole sorted. Now it's time to work on the diff. I noticed that the diff was a little bit weepy and we didn't actually change the oil the first time around. So what I'm going to do is throw some Castrol diff oil in it. Um, really easy, I've already drained it. It came out with a little bit of like crap and it was quite almost like graphite, like the oil had gone really thick. Um, so some nice fresh diff oil will sort that right out. We used an R33 Nissan Skyline diff for the conversion. From factory, it's just a basic viscous LSD and it's a good candidate for an upgraded centre later down the track which will make it more predictable and better for skids. Just giving everything a final check over but it's all looking really good. Now our exhaust should sound good and can get it off the hoist, take it back to the shed and start to look at the inside of the car. I actually managed to get some replacement carpet for this car. The carpet that came in it was very froggy, which I think what you called it at the time. Um, the car had leaked water, everything got wet and mouldy and gross. And so we just got rid of it um, also, but now that the floor repairs are done, we can put some sound ending down and then just put the carpet in. It doesn't come cut and we don't have the old carpet to compare it to, so that will make it a little bit tricky, but it also allows us to sort of clean up a lot of this wiring, um, rub back anything that looks a bit yuck, paint it up, cover it in some sound ending, put some carpet in and make it a nicer place to be. You probably also notice there's no door trim here. That's because the lock has never worked on the driver's door. The actual unit in there is busted. I've got a new one coming, but it has to come from America because for some, for some reason they have tons of parts for E30s and they're cheap. So that's on its way here. So for now, I just won't be able to lock it, keep it inside. And then the interior will just slowly come back together as I piece it together. I'm also going to lose this drift wheel. Um, it's probably fine. Uh, I just find it puts the wheel too close to me. It's like, it's, it's like this and you can't get to the control. So I've got another wheel, one I got in Japan actually, that was intended for the mirror that I'll put on this for now, which should make it a nicer driving experience. So the car has an AGI half cage in there that we put in before. Um, it's also got the eyelets to put harnesses on, which we did use. It's compatible with the Evo 7 seats, uh, Evo 8 seats. Uh, but we've also got the factory seat belts. The only thing I didn't have was that the actual receivers for these, the clips, were completely worn out. And it's always been a little bit dicky to use, so I've been using the harnesses. Um, I managed to get a set of new clips, so we will install them as well before the carpet goes in, which means you can just choose. If you're cruising down the highway, you can put these on. If you're doing something more serious, you can use the harness. Aftermarket moulded carpet is made in a giant heated press which forms it closely to the shape of your floor pan. 
I've never had it fit quite as well as replacement carpet from the factory, but it's about a quarter of the price, so worth an hour or two of messing with it to make it fit. With the inside of the car coming together nicely, it's now time to go and use the car for its intended purpose. I'm down here at Sydney Motorsport Park to do a skid pan. I've got some other V8 vehicles. Some look pretty familiar. Um, and we're just gonna get on there and just have a mad time. Hello, mate. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here, mate. How you doing? Are you ready to come for a skid? Yeah. A very wet, slippery skid. All right, here we go. <laughs> skid time, mate. Let's do it. Ready for some mad tandem drifts. <laughs> Hopefully not tandem this with the is, wall. It's gonna be hard. Cause it's wet, so like everything. Here we go. Third gear, ready? Yeah. Oh wow. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's so. It's just so snappy. I can tell it's a handful. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nice. Yes. It's, it's really like compared to your BRZ. It's so hard to drive sideways. It doesn't feel like it wants to do it at all, does not, it? Not really. But when it does, it feels really rewarding. Yeah. yeah. Getting there. Just take Good some man. practice. Are you going to have a go? Yeah, dude, I'm ready. Next session, man, you're up. The only wall you got to be really careful of. The rest are pretty good. Not too far away. <laughs> yeah, dude. Too much, too much. <laughs> Alright, let's try having a lighter hand at it. Nice. Oh, it's hard to grab, isn't it? It's really hard, hard to, to grab, grab it back. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, it. oh I was close. <laughs> I was close. Nailed it. Almost got a lap done. Oh, well done. That was Sorry, cool, man. Everyone. I reckon there might be some setup in it, though. Totally. Yeah, it, it's like touch and go whether you make it or not. We talk, I'll put down to I'll put down to my ability in it for the first time. But also, I reckon there's just like I don't it's, know. It's an old car. It's also been set up for street. Like it's got low coilovers, hard suspension. Yeah. No camber in the front to help with grip there. Yeah. Like short gearing, all sorts of things. But but it's fun. It's good. It sounds good. It's hot in here. I'm out. Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, oh my door. Oh, good. I'll let you you have to go and let me out. <laughs> This E30 came to us in a pretty sorry state. Rusty with broken, non-pure engine, leaking coolant, oil and water out of every spot. In just a few days, we re-engine swapped it to a stock GM 6.2 litre V8, six-speed manual with a Nissan rear end. We more than doubled the factory power, and then we went and did some mad skids in it. But I wasn't finished with it. There was more untapped potential and things we still wanted to fix to make this an epic street car with some trackability. First, we had to sort out some of the rust that was slowly eating away at this old car. With the help of an old friend, we upgraded the cam and the brakes. We also made a new friend along the way who taught us a thing or two about engines. We then found an extra 80 kilowatts at the rear wheels on the dyno. A 30-year-old Euro is something totally different for us but I absolutely love how this thing looks on the road and how effortlessly it makes power. It's just a joy to drive and I think to look at. What a mad car. It was already great, but the cams just made it that much better. A few little changes here and there, big brakes, and just pick any gear. <laughs> wow, so good. How much does this car weigh again? Do you remember? I don't know, 12, 1300 kilos. Wow, so it, actually similar to our um, 240Z, that it's a, like a 330 kilowatts and a thousand kilos? About half a ton less than the car that the engine came out of. Wow. So it's like a really nice combo. I just love the look of it. I love how it drives. It's just, it's a, it's a really good thing. I'm glad we actually had the time to kind of take it where it had to get to and yep. kind of do it properly. Yep. And now it's just, it's a mad car, man. Yep. Some tidy ups here and there, but it's, it's mad. I only really feel like there's just, one one thing. Just one little thing. Left one little to do. thing that needs to happen. Black Chops, a 1989 320i. We're not really sure where it came from. Well, we, we're sure that it came from Germany. 
uh, in the late point. 80s at some point. It's got a plate on it that says it's an official Japan BMW thing, but then the guy I bought it from said it came from the UK. So I have no idea. All I know is this thing, when we got it, was already engine swapped. Uh, it was one of the worst driving cars I've ever driven. Was it as bad as a DeLorean in terms of driving experience? It was close. I'm sure these were great when they were new, and I have not driven that many of these particular E30s, but I can tell you that this was bad. Accelerator pedal didn't work properly, cluster pedal didn't work properly, engine was bad, brakes were bad, Nasty. gear shift was like you couldn't get it into gear. Fixed now though, do you reckon that engine swap happened in Japan? Or do you reckon that engine swap happened here? More likely it happened here, I reckon. Yeah. Because that's that was the hot sauce for a long time, was just to put the 2.5 or even a 2.7 Frankenstein, yeah. whatever engine in it. Um, a really simple, straightforward swap. Uh, we went with a V8 because V8s make good power and it's not any heavier and it fits. And the LS3s, they're a good size. They're yeah. a good size. They're, they're compact, I guess, in that way, in that it fits in there. Cammed, we're getting 330 kilowatts at the wheels. Um, 330? Is it? 330 kilowatts if you poke the air filter out the bonnet, or yeah. 300 low 300s if you don't, because yeah. it gets pretty hot in there. That's probably about the only thing this car doesn't have yet is a cold air intake, but aside from that, it drives really, really nicely now. It's spun up a really healthy number on the dyno, and it's been really nice for me. I know a lot of people, you know, V8 LSs, there's a lot of junk out there on the internet about it, but for me, I've never owned a high powered rear wheel drive car, particularly something like this that's kind of has a bit of cool factor about it, like it's been painted already. Um, it's really a really fun experience to drive. A high revving turbocharged two litre thing or, or less is sort of the cars that I normally have the most experience with and flat engines, like I'm from Subaru land originally. So this is so different for me, uh, even though LS swaps may not be different for the internet, according to internet law. Uh, for me, that works really well, especially now that it stops as well as it goes. And I think what complements that so well is not just having that power, but also having the mad seats, having the AGI cage, uh, Michelin tires, like all of these little things that are just all a little bit extra that make it a nice car to cruise around in. Because ultimately, the car was made for Marty to kind of, you know, cruise around, do some drive days and stuff like that. But now it also does excellent skids. It does. Uh, also will pull some decent times um, at the track yeah. as well. And um, But most importantly, a car that you can just um, attempt to beat the 240Z with because they're making <laughs> the same power and they're the same kind of car. So I'm looking forward to that, uh, a little bit of driving with those two cars because both, 300 plus kilowatts, both two door rear wheel drive. It's gonna be good. And like the 240, these are just starting to edge into that category of like, it's hard to find nice ones. Yes. You know, for a while you could buy these for a couple of hundred bucks off, you know, Gumtree or eBay or whatever, but that's sort of through that now. And a lot of the junky ones and rusty ones are gone. And so there's a couple like this that are left. And even but we they're, had to, they're going up. We had to fix just... the rust in it too. I mean, there was, it's obvious had a couple of rust repairs before we even got to it. And then our brake master cylinder problem just made it way worse. So luckily we were able to fix that. Um, and now the car is just good to get in and drive whenever you want. Just change your oil in it and service it. It's always a weird feeling when projects get to this point. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's, it's kind of done. Supergram's got to this point, then it didn't, then it did again. And it's, you know, you can just get in it and drive it. But that's actually where some of the joy is because, hey, there's a skid pan day or hey, there's a track day. And it's not going to set any records on the track as it is, yeah. but it's going to be a heaps of fun, especially if your choices are like that or a Nissan March Super Turbo. And a Super Turbo is not going to go that fast ever. But it's going to honk like Good, a boss. But it's going to honk. And they've all got awesome. their like nice things about them to drive. So for me, fast rear wheel drive, V8 even, is really exciting. No, I'm not going to supercharge it or turbo it or make a thousand horsepower. It doesn't need to. In that, that chassis. Like it's just, it's so wild as it is. Yeah. But a massive thank you, of course, to um, uh, the people that helped make this uh, build happen. Of course, the gang over at Brintech. Uh, because they're just they're just bosses. Mm. Um, they did an awesome job helping with that. Um, the guys at Haltech as well. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it, Martin. Isn't it? That's good. Like I said, it feels weird when it gets to this point, but I'm just... I'm it's just like the weird awkward silence it. when you say bye to someone <laughs> exactly. and then realise you're walking the same way as them and then they're still there. It kind of feels like that. So you will see a bit of black tops again. We're going to take it out and use it. Like that's, that's what it's for now. Um, but in the meantime, on to some other projects. He's smiling. Yep. It's, yep. It's a project for my friend here. <laughs> I don't know what the clicky fingers means. I do. Yeah. I know exactly what it means. Yes. Anyway, clickety clickety, front and back. Thanks for watching. Thanks Thank for you very coming much. along on this uh, E30 adventure with us. Uh, it's it's been a lot of fun, and we've ended up with a car that is freaking awesome. Very stoked. Very stoked. Uh, thanks everybody. See you soon on the internet. You can support the show if you'd like to at MightyCarMods.com. We've got lots of stuff there. We'll ship it all over the world. It gets shipped from here in Sydney, Australia. That's the car. That's my friend Martin. Hello, goodbye, and um, see you next get time. A shiitake, a shiitake mushroom. Snack pack. Shita oh, you're getting a snack pack? I'm going to get okay, a snack I'll pack my line. I want a snack of pack. mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. That's gross. Ew.